My name is Josh Willis. I'm a climate scientist and oceanographer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I'm here at the AGU meeting in San Francisco with about 19,000 of my closest scientist friends. Uh, I study sea level rise and ocean warming, and I use data from satellites that measure the surface height of the ocean. Uh, these tell us about sea level, but they also tell us about where the ocean's warming and where it's cooling. Um, I also use data from a program called Argo, which is a set of almost 3,000 floats worldwide that measure temperature and salinity uh, all over the ocean in the top half of the ocean, about the top 2,000 meters. One of the really neat things about the current NASA and NOAA administrations is that they've come to appreciate the fact that we need not only new satellites, but continuation of some of the older measurements that we have. For instance, the JSON series of satellites that measure sea level are being continued out into the future into JSON 3 and eventually a fourth JSON satellite called JSON CS. These are in the works and further down the road, but overall there's a recognition of the importance of continuing time series that we started and watching the evolution of the planet as it changes, uh, driven by human activities. In addition to the time series that we're continuing, we also have some new things coming up. In oceanography, we have Aquarius, which will measure the salinity at the sea surface for the first time from space. This has never been done before. We've been measuring the temperature from space for a long time, but never the salinity, so it's very exciting. Uh, in addition, further down the road uh, is an upcoming mission called SWAT, which will measure um, surface water on the, on the continents as well as sea level on very, very small scales. So all of the very small eddies and things that play an important role uh, in biological processes, in uh, fisheries, um, will also be able to be measured from space with this new mission SWAT. Well, I hope to learn at AGU a little bit about uh, the oceans and climate. I'm really interested in how the oceans interact with the climate at large and what kind of role they're going to play as the planet heats up in the next century. And I think I've seen some really interesting talks on ocean and ice interaction. Turns out that a lot of the ice melt in Antarctica and Greenland may have to do with changes in the ocean. As the ocean warms, the glaciers that run off the continents and into the sea wind up melting more quickly and losing more ice. And this is a really important factor that we really haven't been able to appreciate in terms of global sea level rise and looking out into the future at how it's going to change. So there's been a lot of really interesting work in terms of ice-ocean interactions at this meeting, and I think there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. I think uh, digital media is a very powerful tool for communicating and one that scientists need to do a lot better in exploiting. Scientists, in my opinion, are sort of impaired communicators. I think we're pretty good at talking to each other, but we have a difficult time talking to the general public and the public at large. Uh, but whatever tools that we can use to help facilitate that communication are really important. Science, in a large respect, is all about communication. If you figure something out but you don't tell it to anybody, what good is it? So I think science communication is extremely important and tools like this can help scientists communicate better with each other and hopefully in the long run better with the public as well.